So we have Oreo cookies. Okay. I'm trying to figure out. There must be more that we can do with these cookies that we haven't done yet. I'm tempted to, like, find a spoon and very carefully carve out all the phases of the moon. You do that. <laughs> so we're we're at where with donations? $12,125. So if you go to cosmoquest.org slash donate, that's where you see our little funding bar. Uh, we uh, set a very optimistic goal of 200000 which would cover um, CosmoQuest operations for six months. However, uh, our first order of business is to, to uh, continue to pay our programmers. Uh, theirs is the funding that's most in jeopardy, and so we decided that 15000 was enough to feed Joe for a year, and so we're shooting for that. And, and no matter when we get it, we're going to make him watch Firefly anyway, so let's just get to 15000 and uh, we'll sit him down. It's fine. <laughs> These these are the things that we do for our science. If you cannot, if you can't donate, uh, that's fine. Uh, we appreciate you watching. We appreciate you sharing. We appreciate you doing citizen science with us. Um, watching the hangouts plus plus wanting retweeting, doing all the, the social things, um, and just you know telling your friends about the work we're doing and getting them involved in science too. Uh, like we've said a couple times before, astronomy is a gateway science. Um, yeah. You tell people you're an astronomer, and they're like, oh, 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 I have this thing. You know, they want to ask about black holes, or they know something about the sun. Um, and so there's um, – people are fascinated about the universe around them, either locally in our solar system or on the grandest scales of the universe, and they always have uh, all kinds of questions. Um, and so, yeah, astronomy is a good gateway science to get people, if you want to get your friends thinking more about science, thinking more scientifically, uh, getting them involved in a citizen science project where they're actually thinking about how the data comes together, that's one great way to do it. And, you know, we are always looking to find creative solutions to problems that uh, scientists are, are working on, and we're both scientists, and we're always looking for projects to get engaged with as well. And we're looking for those problems where someone says, I just want to study, but I don't have enough students, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough resources to go through all of this data because I have to clear it off my hard drive every few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, with $50,000, we can do a complete citizen science project around radio astronomy. Um, that, that Do you want to describe the project? Sure. So uh, there's a, uh, several telescopes coming online now. One in particular, the Long Wavelength Array, is, um, is a low-frequency radio telescope. When I say low-frequency, I mean below the FM band on your radio dial, which for radio astronomy is very low. This gets to the part of the spectrum where um, the Milky Way is incredibly bright. The sun is there. It's not as bright as the Milky Way. It's a really totally bizarre way of seeing the sky. Um, there's uh, supernova remnants and bright radio galaxies and, and uh, the magnetosphere around the planet Jupiter. And all of these bright things in the sky are happening. Um, but we're looking to see what things are changing. Uh, so they have a project where they are imaging the entire sky every few minutes um, for, gosh, they've been doing it for a year now, yeah. I think at least a year. Um, and all of these images, um, you, can do an, you can do a point source selection, but it only does it to a certain percentage. It isn't good enough to catch everything. And so they need people to actually look at the data. Um, because of how much data comes out of a telescope like that, they can only save the raw visibilities for some number of weeks. Um, and so if the images don't get looked at in that time, the raw visibilities are going to get lost. Uh, and so they're looking for people to help out. They've had, I think, one grad student who's been uh, keep trying to keep up on the images, but, you know, he's trying to take classes and write papers and, and do research as well. So like with the moon, with the, the mappers projects, where people are uh, marking all these craters with precision that's much better than that of what an automated system can do, uh, they're finding craters and we're, they're hoping to uh, look for radio transient events, things that are changing across the sky, whether it be a flare on Jupiter or um, uh, another exoplanet flare more distant or colliding neutron stars. So these really bizarre physics uh, that's creating uh, transient events like that. So that's the one. That's one project we'd we'd like to get started. But uh, like we say, we need to we need to pay and feed the programmers to uh, in order to get that going. And and so this is where we need your help. 
Uh, normally, we would be going to the National Science Foundation looking for science funding. Normally, we would be working with NASA to get uh, funding from uh, their NASA Roses EPOS call. Um, but we hit a, a two-pronged fail mode. Um, the, the NASA Roses grant that we would normally apply for and that we typically get every other year um, well, last year they didn't do a call for proposals. It was just flat out canceled due to budgetary cuts. Uh, we had a program that was up for renewal, so we couldn't go in for renewal. So this year we were going in for renewal on that one and putting in a new grant as well. Um, but they just put that grant on permanent hold and um, that means that for two years in a row something that we have a 50% chance of getting most of the time we haven't even had a chance to try for. And then coming out of the National Science Foundation we, we've gotten word from multiple sources that well the space race is over we won it's time to send the astronomers home and they're looking to spend fewer and fewer dollars on paying for salaries of people like the two of us. They've made the choice that if you're not tenured, tenure track, faculty, um, you failed, go home. And that means that all of us who are in a different kind of career, all of us who are focused on research and public engagement um, or just flat out nothing but research, uh, we aren't as valued anymore and it's going to be harder for us to get the dollars. So getting all of this at once with sequestration on top of it we need about six months to turn around what we do and seek other funding sources. The government isn't the only place to get funding for astronomy. Um, there are public grants, there are um, commercial companies that will sponsor research and we're going to turn around our efforts and go after these new forms of money. But it's going to take time. You have to write the grant, you have to wait for them to make the decision, you have to wait for the money to get processed and we're asking for your help to bridge from now until then to make sure that we don't have to fire Joe, fire Corey. And I hate saying this, but these are very real possibilities. These are the things that keep me awake at night when you see me tweeting at four in the morning. So take a moment. If you are thinking of getting a Starbucks coffee on the way to see your dad for Father's Day, can you donate the money to Starbucks and tell your dad, hey, let's support science together and watch the show together and celebrate science with some Oreo cookies that you turn into geologic features. Um, just that $4, because Starbucks is stupidly expensive. I drink it all the time. Um, but actually, I don't. I have a 20. Do you have here? No, yeah, I don't really. I drink it in airports occasionally. Um, only when there's not an Admiral's Club, but that's a divergence. Um, spend, spend some time with your family, celebrate science, get engaged, and uh, if you might have a spare five dollars, that spare five dollars, that's half an hour of student work. And, um, you know, it, our university matches what we spend on graduate students by paying their tuition. So you could help put a kid through college um, just by not buying that Starbucks. So help, please, returning to you. Um, we thought we were good, and then the government changed how things are funded. So we got a tweet from our, our friend Moon Ranger Laura. Uh, oh, saying, awesome! Please donate to CosmoQuest. Uh, they haven't had time to watch the Hangout at all, but they're donating anyway. So thank you guys. Thank, thank you, you, John and Laura. <laughs> John, John and Laura are two of our friends from the podcasting community. Um, John has a fabulous narration voice and has done a bunch of work for Escape Pod. Uh, Laura works with the Parsec Awards and um, we're all one big community doing this together. Um, I think we should do some more science facts and I will send out a lunar surly to whoever shares what do we want to do a science fact about. You want me to think? <laughs> I want you to name name something that has facts associated with it. Belly buttons. No. Oh. I'm going to keep it astronomical. 
<laughs> okay, so we have a lunar surly. Astronomical belly buttons. No. Well, those are like craters, right? No. <laughs> we want science facts about moons in the solar system. <laughs> oh, sorry. We want science facts about moons in the solar system. Um, and we will pick the best fact and uh, send a surly of the moon to that person. Um, and then I'm going to run off to go find the paint for the next segment. Actually, do you want to spur on the science facts while I run and get the paint? Sure. Okay. Spur. <laughs> My brain is dead. I don't know what you expected. We're, we're going to send you to bed while we do astronomy <laughs> cast, I suspect. <laughs> When's that? Is that soon? <laughs> That's soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, yes, yeah, so we're looking for uh, the, t the hashtag for this is science fact, right? Yeah. Okay, so hashtag science fact on Twitter. Uh, give us an interesting fact about what we're we doing. Moons. Moons. Science facts. Uh, science facts. That's what we used before. S C I E N C E F A C T S. Tweet science facts, your your interesting uh, moon fact at us. Uh, while you're doing that, I do want to address a comment from John Hauer, who uh, deliberately waited until we were slightly tired, and we're actually really tired, to ask this question about um, can, um, if a photon would be expected to travel faster than the speed of light uh, if a laser was fired from a moving object. And so that is... Um, one of the tenets of, of uh, Einstein's special relativity, right, is that no matter what you fire a beam of light from, it always moves at the speed of light. And this is counterintuitive if you compare light to, say, a baseball. If, I'm, uh, if I can throw a baseball at, I don't know, what's a reasonable speed for me, I don't know, 10, whatever 10 in, in units. Uh, if I throw a baseball, if I throw something at 10 miles an hour, um, it moves at 10 miles an hour without, you know, any other forces acting on it. If I'm walking at 2 miles an hour and throw a baseball at, two, at 10 miles an hour, uh, then it's 12 miles an hour that that baseball is moving. Um, doesn't work that way if I'm shooting a beam of light at the speed of light from my hand, which would be awesome. Uh, and then if I was walking and shooting that beam of light from my hand, uh, it would still come out at the same speed, not the speed of light plus 2. Um, and so... Um, so the way that happens, and so he asks, I've heard that space and time warp to keep the photon at the speed of light, and that is indeed what happens. This was theorized by Einstein in that you get time dilation, so time actually slows down, and length contraction, things get smaller. Um, we've been making jokes about this. We move so quickly that the 24-hour uh, hangout is now 32 hours, and so we've been calling that time dilation as a joke. But that's a real um, thing that you see um, I'm getting blinged at. Uh, that is a real effect that has been seen. And in fact, if we didn't correct for that, uh, your GPS uh, tracking would be way off. And so that, uh, yes, space and time actually warp and change. Um, and if it didn't, do, and uh, we've actually measured that from, from, uh, from satellites. And so there, I hope, is your semi-coherent uh, answer to that question. Uh, I'm getting pinged at by multiple people, so I need to check. Uh, Richard Drum is back after an hour of sleep, so uh, thank you guys. Um, it was, uh, yeah, thank you. We're getting comments on, on doing well. Uh, so Richard is back after an hour of sleep. Uh, Pamela's gone to get shirt stuff. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. What, I think the next segment is continuing on the making of the really pretty shirt that uh, Courtney was talking about. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to go back and check our tweets of science facts and see uh, what we have. No, these are all old. They're not ours. Um, so if you can tweet your moon fact from science facts, you'll get a... Uh, ceramic necklace uh, made by Surly Amy, this beautiful glazed ceramic necklace that looks like uh, the moon. Um, so please uh, tweet science facts, your interesting moon fact. Uh, it doesn't have to be our moon, it could be any moon. Um, go ahead and, and tweet that at us. Um, I'm going to check the comments and say hello. Um, my comments are not coming in any faster, so uh, either you all have gone to bed 
Oh, here is one from Will Selwood. One day Mars will have less moons. Uh, Phobos will either crash into Mars or it will break up into something like ring. Uh, so Phobos and Deimos are the two ring, uh, moons of Mars. They are small asteroid-like bodies that have been captured in Mars's orbit. Um, and yeah, they're not necessarily stable there. So that is a moon fact. Uh, we'll keep taking your moon facts for a little bit and see what we get. <laughs> Tim says Europa is one of the smoothest objects in the solar system and for some reason my brain went smooth like smooth jazz but no he meant actually the surface is one of the smoothest objects in the solar system so that's a moon fact uh, you didn't use the right hashtag sweetie sorry <laughs> uh, but close uh, we're looking for science facts <laughs> But um, so I'll give you guys a few more minutes uh, while Pamela collects the crafty materials. I just explained special relativity. <laughs> <laughs> she gave me a look like, what? Answer the question.